This video is all about mathematical modelling using sequences and series. We're just going to do one example in this video. Here it is. So, we are told that Bruce starts a new company. In year one, his profits will be £20,000. He predicts that his profits are going to increase by £5,000 each year, so that his profits in year two are modelled to be 25,000, in year three, 30,000, year four, 35,000, and so on and so on. So we have an arithmetic sequence. It is going up by 5,000 pounds every single year. He predicts this will continue until he reaches annual profits of 100,000 pounds. He then models his annual profits to remain at 100,000 pounds. But we're going to answer these questions on this problem. So let's just start, obviously, with question A. Get a bit of space. OK, so the question says, calculate the profits for Bruce's business in the first 20 years. So in this situation, we have got um, an arithmetic sequence. Like I said, it's going up by £5,000 every year, starting at £20,000. So our first term, A, is 20,000. Our common difference, D, is 5,000. And this arithmetic sequence continues up until the point where it reaches 100,000 pounds. Once it gets to that, it stops increasing and stays at 100,000 pounds every year. So, I need to figure out when it's, uh, when it's going to stop. When do his annual profits stop at £100,000? Then I can solve this problem. Because we've got two situations here. We've got the situation where the profits are going up by uh, 5000 every year. Then it will stop at 100000 And then it's always at 100000 every year after that. Okay, so we've got two different situations. And in terms of me working out the total profit uh, in the first 20 years, I'm going to need to consider where one situation turns into the second situation. So, um, I want to find when does it become 100,000. So to do that, we're going to need to use the nth term. When do the profits get to 100,000? So, uh, my nth term is a plus n minus 1 times d. That's the formula for the nth term here. So in this case here, I'm going to have 20,000 plus n minus 1 times d, uh, d is 5,000, and I want to find n when that equals 100,000 pounds. How many years will it be until the profits are 100,000? Right, let's solve this equation to work out n then. So take away 20,000 and divide by 5,000. So take away 20,000, I'll get uh, 80,000. Then divide by the 5,000. That is going to give me uh, 16, I think. And so add the 1 then. After 17 years, his profit is going to be £100,000. So, what we found then is for the first 17 years, his profit is going up by £5,000 every year. After 17 years, his profit then just stays at £100,000 every single year. So basically, when I want to work out the profit for the first 20 years, the first 17 of those are following my arithmetic sequence. So I can use the formula for that. The three years after that, well, that's just 100,000 every year. So I won't use the formula for that because it's just three lots of 100,000. So my sum up to 20 years is going to be, like I said, it's going to be, I'm going to use the uh, sum formula for the first 17 years. And the sum formula is n over 2 
2a plus n minus 1 times d. So that's going to be for the first 17 years, plus three lots of the um, 100,000. Okay, so let's replace these terms then. So n is 17. A we know is 20,000, so I've got two lots of 20,000 in here. So that's going to be 40,000. I've got 17 minus 1 in there, which is going to be 16. Times D, which is 5,000. OK, and now we can just work that out to get our answer. So just bear with me for a moment. Doesn't work. Okay, and we should get 1,320,000 pounds. There we go. So the key thing here is, like I said, splitting the situation up into the two parts. The parts where you've got it going up by 5,000 pounds every single year, um, and then the second part where it's constant at 1,000, uh, 100,000. You can use the formula for the first part because it's an arithmetic sequence. The second part, just very simply, we like that. Okay, so that's part A of this problem done. <coughs> part B. State one reason why this may not be a suitable model. So what the model is suggesting it goes up by £5,000 every year. Why is that not suitable? Well, it's unlikely that your profits are going to go up by the same amount every single year. That's what I would say for this question B. I'd just simply say it's unlikely that the profits will go up by the same amount every year. Part C. Bruce's financial advisor says that the yearly profits are likely to increase by 5% per annum. Using this model, calculate the profits for Bruce's business in the first 20 years. Okay, so let's just think about what this model is then for a, mo uh, for a moment. So we know he starts with £20,000. We know that from up here. In year one, his profits will be 20000 So we know that A is 20000 And Bruce's advisor is saying that his profits are going to go up by 5% every year. So that means I'm going to be multiplying by 1.05 to work out his profits for year two. Then I'm going to multiply by 1.05 to get his profits for year three. Multiply by 1.05 to get the profits for year four, and so on and so on and so on. Basically, it's a geometric sequence where the common ratio is 1.05. That's what Bruce's uh, financial advisor is saying. He's saying the arithmetic sequence isn't actually very good because it's unlikely that the profits are going to go up by the same amount each and every single year. Actually, a geometric sequence is probably a better model to use. Um, and he thinks that the profits are going to go up by 5% each year. So, we need to use this model to calculate the profits for Bruce's business in the first 20 years. So, total profits in the first 20 years. So, I want to use the sum formula, so I want the total profits. The sum formula where A is uh, 20,000, R is 1.05 and n is 20. Remember the sum formula it can be written in two different ways. We can write it as a multiplied by 1 minus r to the n over 1, uh, 1 minus r. Or we can write it as a times r to the power n minus 1 over r minus 1. Two ways of writing the same formula. Okay, so let's substitute the numbers in. So the sum for 20 years is going to be equal to 20,000. The common ratio is 1.05 to the power of 20 minus 1, all over 1.05 minus 1. And 
again, just be patient with me while I take this in. Okay, and we should get 661,319 pounds. Okay, so Bruce's advisor's model is actually, you can see, predicting quite a lot less than Bruce's model did. Bruce's model predicted 1,320,000, whereas his financial advisor is predicting 661,000 after the 20 years. So quite a big difference between these two models. Um, that's part uh, C, anyway. Part D, according to his financial advisor, so using this model here, the geometric sequence, um, after how many years will Bruce's total profits exceed one million? So how, uh, what is the value of N, how many years, that makes the sum become bigger than one million. So, again, we're going to use the sum formula where the sum needs to equal one million. So one million equals 20,000, my A, common ratio 1.05 to the power N minus one over 1.05 minus one. So basically the sum is 1 million, the first term is still 20,000, so the common ratio is still 1.05. I want to find how many years, I want to find out what n is. And so this is the equation I'm going to solve. Okay, so we're going to rearrange this. So obviously the 1.05 take away 1 is just going to be 0.05. Basically, I'm just rearranging this to make n the subject. So I'm just going to go through a few steps to make an n the subject here. So multiply by the 0 0.05. So 1 million times 0 0.05 is going to be uh, 50,000, I think. Equals uh, 20,000 uh, 20, times 1.05 to the power n minus 1. Divide by the 20,000, so we'll get 50,000 divided by 20,000, uh, which is going to be 2.5, I think, equals 1.5, uh, 1.05 to the power of n minus 1. I'm going to add the 1, so 3.5 equals 1.05 to the power of n. So, uh, if I want to find the power here, I'm going to take logarithms of both sides, where the base is 1.05. So n equals log to the base 1.05 of 3.5. And that will give me 25.676. Uh, so basically, in the 20, about just over halfway through the 25th year, um, his profits will be equal to one million pounds. So I would say after 26 years, um, profits will exceed one million. That is part D, this question. And finally, part E states one reason why this may not be a suitable model. Well, as opposed to the first model where we said that uh, there was a maximum amount that the profits could be in a certain year, um, so Bruce said that his profits, although they were going to go up by £5,000 every single year, there was a limit to what they could be. Um, he said that they weren't uh, they were eventually going to get to 100,000 and then stay at that value. Whereas Bruce's advisor, notice there's no upper limit to this. He's saying that it's going to go up by 5% every single year and he's, he's put no upper limit on that. So I would say that that, that is a reason why that this is not a sensible model because there, there is no upper limit to what the profits could be. 
um, Boost's advisor is saying that the profit's going to go up and up and up and up and there's never going to be an upper limit to that, which is a bit, a bit unrealistic. Um, so there we go, there's a question on mathematical modelling with series. Um, we've seen two different models, we've seen an arithmetic model and we've seen a geometric model for the same problem, for the same situation um, and how they can make different predictions and the limitations of each of those models.